Hi, uh, my name is Rebecca Salmon and I am the colorectal MP here at UCSF. Um, today's, uh, I'm going to talk to you about hemorrhoids, um, what they are, how to prevent them and how to treat them. Um, and hopefully you'll walk away with an understanding of what's going on with you uh, and why you're having issues with, um, uh, with hemorrhoids. So many people describe rectal bleeding or itching or discomfort um, and, uh, and it's really actually very treatable without any sort of medical intervention. So hopefully after you watch this video, you'll know how to take care of yourself and also kind of treat your problems for hemorrhoids uh, with hemorrhoids for the rest of your life. So let's start with a little bit of basic anatomy. There's a lot of misconceptions about hemorrhoids out there. There's, um, yeah, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet and people really have the wrong idea about what hemorrhoids actually are and what causes them. Um, hemorrhoids are actually just part of your normal anatomy. They're named veins, that's it. So if we name the veins in our face hemorrhoids, we would say, look at my hemorrhoids. That's all they are. They're just part of normal anatomy. Everybody has them. Um, babies have them. Your best friend has them. Your enemies have them. Barack Obama has them. Donald Trump has them. Everyone has them. There's nothing special about hemorrhoids. They're just part of normal anatomy. Uh, very often people come in and they say, oh yeah, hemorrhoids run in my family. You know, my mom had them. That's why I have problems. And that's really just doesn't make any sense. It's just part of normal anatomy. Of course it runs in your family because it runs in the human family, okay? So first of all, it's to know that having hemorrhoids is just something that everybody has. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about just where they are and kind of what the purpose of hemorrhoids are, okay? I'm gonna do this little picture. Okay, so this is the exit kind of out of your body. So this would be your rectum, this is your anal canal, and then this is your butt here. So your butt, your anal canal, and your rectum. Your anal canal is about two to three centimeters, depending on how, how tall you are. Men tend to have a longer anal canal. Women have a, a shorter anal canal, and it also kind of just depends on how tall you are. Usually it's about two to three centimeters long. Um, this transition out is exactly the same as the transition in. So this would, the skin on your butt is similar to the skin on your face. This would be your anal canal and then your mouth would be like your rectum. So the transition in is exactly the same as the transition out. So think about the skin on your lips. The skin on your lips is a little thinner, it's more prone to cracking, it's more sensitive. Um, so that's the same thing with the anal canal. So for that reason, your body has basically evolved um, to protect the anal canal, evolved this kind of fluffy layer of, um, I'm gonna use this, this kind of fluffy layer of veins here that are called hemorrhoids. And hemorrhoids serve two purposes. They basically protect the anal canal from anything going out or going in. So it kind of is an extra protection layer on top of this kind of skin that um, prevents kind of cracking and issues and stuff like that. So that's one of the things hemorrhoids do. The other thing is it's kind of a natural end point of all the blood flow in the pelvis. So you basically have um, you know, your urinary function, your sexual function, your sacrum, your rectum. There's all sorts of blood flow in the pelvis. And the hemorrhoids is just basically a nice place for the body to kind of have an end point of a lot of the blood flow there. So there's about a million, two million, who knows how many blood vessels in the hemorrhoids. That's why when people say, I have one hemorrhoid and it's giving me a problem, that's also very rarely ever true. Um, there's a million hemorrhoids in there and they flare kind of individually depending on what's been going on with you. So there's a transition zone in the middle of the anal canal that's called the dentate line. And everything above this area, um, uh, there's no sense, there's no nerve function that we can feel. So we're, we can't feel anything internally. Um, of course, there's nerves there that are working, but we don't feel them. And everything externally uh, below that line, we do feel, okay? And this is a kind of a cutoff point for hemorrhoids. Anything above the line, these, these veins tend to swell and get kind of like uh, juicy and swollen, and then you pass the stool, and then you're going to bleed, okay? So that's what we, ref what's what we mean when we say internal hemorrhoids. So internal hemorrhoids bleed. Very, that's, that's what they do. We don't feel them, they're not painful, but you get rectal bleeding. External um, hemorrhoids swell up and kind of come out. They often get itchy, they kind of feel, you feel kind of like swollen, you feel uncomfortable. That's because we have sensation here that we can actually, we're aware of. And so these hemorrhoids tend to swell. Now, occasionally you'll get um, a, a hemorrhoid that we call a mixed hemorrhoid. So that's when you get this swelling and you get the rectal bleeding. And this is kind of like this entire column of veins gets so impacted and swollen that you kind of have this mixed column of hemorrhoids and that's what we call a mixed hemorrhoid. So you either have an internal hemorrhoid, an external hemorrhoid, or a mixed hemorrhoid. And that is really dependent on the symptoms you have. 
Um, there can occasionally be an emergency, which is what's called an external thrombose hemorrhoid. And this is when basically you've gotten yourself into so much trouble with your bowel habits that you, that you pop a clot. And that's really what it means. You pop a clot. An external thrombose hemorrhoid is a clot in this kind of sack of skin that's swollen from the hemorrhoid tissue. This is very, you know, exquisitely painful. This is very, very painful. Um, and unfortunately, there's very little we can do unless you treat this right away. So if you ever get an external thrombus hemorrhoid, and you will know, it's not gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna be, you know, you're exquisitely painful. Uh, basically, you need to get treatment right away because within the first 72 hours, we can actually cut this clot out. But after 72 hours, uh, the body's already starting to reabsorb the clot, so there's nothing that we can do except warm baths and other things like that. So this is um, probably the only time that a hemorrhoid is actually an emergency. Um, and again, very often we'll see people that come in a week or two later and they're still struggling, it's still painful, but there's just nothing we can do after 72, generally 72 hours, that's when we'll cut it out, okay? So that's kind of what hemorrhoids do. Now, there's only one reason for hemorrhoids, and that is exter uh, pressure in the rectum, pressure where it shouldn't be, okay? Pressure in the rectum causes all of your problems with hemorrhoids. Now, what's nice about that is that that means that treating hemorrhoids is entirely within your own realm. You don't need to see a special doctor. You don't need to do anything. You know, if we wanted to, we could make a lot of money off of you. We can like ban this. We can cut this thing off. We can cut that off. We can do this. But the bottom line is that there's so many hemorrhoids. There's so many veins down there that unless you treat the underlying problem, which is pressure in the rectum, unless you treat this, you will always have problems with your hemorrhoids. They will always come back. You will always have issues with it. And you will spend a lot of time frustrated because you think that the doctors aren't doing their job or your body isn't responding the way that it should to the treatment. But the bottom line is that until you actually treat the underlying cause, you will not get rid of your hemorrhoids. They will always come back. And in some ways that's frustrating for people, but in a lot of ways it's also empowering because if you can do what you need to do to fix your the pressure in the rectum, then you won't have problems with hemorrhoids ever again. Um, okay, so let's talk about pressure in the rectum. Now, I like to explain this pretty simply. I'm a simple person, and I prefer that you understand it um, theoretically rather than tell you some fancy language or something like that. So basically, let's think about pressure in the body. So if we put pressure, if, we, if I put a giant brick on my arm, for whatever reason, I put this big brick on my arm, um, and there, there's pressure where it shouldn't be on my arm, and the body has sensors all over it that basically can tell when there's pressure where it shouldn't be. And the reason the body has these sensors is because if you compress tissue for too long, it dies. Because basically the compression of the tissue reduces blood flow to the tissue and then that tissue dies. A really simple example of this is when you take a long flight, like a, and your butt falls asleep and you have to kind of switch to the side and switch to the side because it kind of hurts and it's uncomfortable. And that's your body telling you there's too much pressure on your butt. You need to move so that the blood flow can come back in and that the tissue can remain you know, alive. So let's go back to the brick. So I put the brick on my arm, the body senses, hey, there's pressure where it shouldn't be, something's going on. And what the body does, does is, this is all out of our control, this is all part of you know, the functions of the body that we're not conscious of. The body basically opens up um, blood flow, sends in a bunch of blood flow into the, into the tissue to pump it up. Because the more blood there is in the tissue, the, the kind of fluffier the tissue is, the more pumped up it is. It also sends in some cellular mediators that kind of stick in there and keep the tissue open and, and the, that allows the blood flow to go in. And it makes sense to us. If we took this brick off, then um, you know it, our, our arm would be red and maybe probably te very tender, it might be bruised. And then for the next couple days, we may like hit it up against something and, and that and our arm would still be you know tender. We'd be like, oh yeah, it was that brick. Okay, that's exactly what's happening here in the rectum. If you put pressure on veins, these hemorrhoid veins, these hemorrhoid you know, blood vessels are gonna respond the way any blood vessel responds. You put pressure on the re put pressure on a vein, increase blood flow, increase cells to the area, and then there you go, you've got yourself juicy, swollen um, uh, you know, blood vessels. You pass a stool and boom, you're gonna bleed. You sit on the toilet for too long and boom, you're gonna end up with you know, the swollen tissue at the bottom. So if you wanna treat your hemorrhoids, you have to treat the pressure in the rectum. And pressure in the rectum is very simply comes from poor bowel habits, that's it. Um, so let's talk about that. There's three things that cause pressure in the rectum commonly. One, sitting on the toilet for longer than five minutes. If you sit on the toilet for longer than five minutes, you will have problems with your hemorrhoids, no doubt, you will have problems. 
The reason why is the toilet was actually designed to increase the pressure in the rectum so you could pass stool. So there you go, you sit on there for longer than five minutes, you're calling in blood flow, your hemorrhoids get in trouble. A lot of people say, five minutes isn't long enough, or I like to read my phone, or I like to, you know, it's the only place I can get some peace for my kids or something like that. And in that case, if you want to be in the bathroom for longer, then what we suggest you do is, you know, you get the urge to go, you sit down, you pass stool, and then you stand up and walk around the bathroom or something like that. And actually standing up in that gravity will kind of bring down into the rectum, uh, you know, what's next, and then you can evacuate that. Or you can sit on top of the toilet seat. But truly, if you are sitting for longer than five minutes, you will absolutely have problems. Number two, straining. Any sort of straining or pushing to get stool out is gonna get you into trouble. Now, many people say, well, I can't go to the bathroom without that. Well, then you have a real problem, okay? Then we need to talk about why you have to strain. Other people just do it because they it's just part of their habit. So what we suggest is um, if you're feeling like you need to strain, the first thing to do is actually elevate your feet onto a stool or any sort of like low thing underneath the toilet. So basically, if you elevate your feet, you change the angle of your of the rectum, and then, hi. Oh no, you need help. 